And we are back. We are back, Bumblebees. Season two, episode 13 of the To Be Better podcast. Mm. We're getting up there. That's a good number. I like the number 13. For those of you who don't know, we are a relationship, communication, personal growth development podcast where we read emails sent in by our viewers, fans, followers, whatever you would like to call them, the To Be Better tribe. Mm. And um, we give unsolicited, well, it's solicited. We give solicited advice to try to help you guys navigate life. We are not doctors or psychiatrists or any other ists. We are not licensed. In any way, shape, or form. And these are purely our unbiased opinions. Yes, we are two people who have made a multitude of mistakes in our lives. We have hurt a lot of people and we've learned from all of that. Yep. So with that being said, we're going to just jump right into this. We are no longer going to be doing a whole lot of banter banter back and forth in the beginning of our podcast we are just going to jump right to the emails and then uh, maybe we'll get into banter later in the episode but if you would like to see what's going on with us in terms of our life um, we have a life account now on youtube and on tiktok to be better life that's it that's all i got just jump right into the emails so this email is titled importance of a prenup yes. question mark okay thank you i'm a i'm a big big fan of that hi chris and peaches I want to start this by saying thank you so much for taking the time to help people bluntly and honestly. I have been a quiet supporter since March 23rd. This person is also in Discord. You've been here for a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Almost a year. Oh, yeah. Wild. Almost a year. Wild. Thank you for the ongoing support. It means a lot. Thank you. It really does. It does. Popping into Discord sometimes to cheer someone on or get advice for what to do with my career for more experienced adults. Watching the growth of the podcast, the community, and yourselves has been incredibly inspiring to me and my growth. Hell yeah. Even on the hardest days after dumpster fires, you stay true to your faith and find peace in it and each other and it shows. Thank you for being an example of that for so many of us that didn't see it in our childhoods. Well, for the rest of the weekend, I'm going to be driving with my sunroof open because there's no way that this big ass ego filled head is going to be able to sit in the car. <laughs> You're going to hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I really do hate having the sunroof open. Oh, I love it That's so, so much. Funny. I want you to know when I drive your car, I open every window. I bet you do. I, do. I hate that. I let it breathe. I hate that knowing that it happens and I'm not even in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I do it in my car, too. Does that still upset you? No, because it's yours. Oh. I don't know. But do you not want outside particles on the inside of your Mercedes? Not really. What if dirt flew through the window or something? <laughs> I got white interior in there. I don't know. It's got a ceramic. It doesn't matter. Let's get back in the email. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I love you, too. But oh, I'm going to start crying. Even my quirks, it's, my weird it's quirks. It's so overwhelming for me. Why? Over all of that, what triggered yeah, that? I don't know. It's just that's it's it's absolutely adorable to me because a piece of dirt may have flown into your car. You would never know because I would take care of it for you. Yeah, I know. I also have it detailed every Monday. Right. I don't know. I just, just worry about that shit. It's I weird. love you. You're so quirks. Quirks. I have quirks. Yeah, you we'll, do. We'll just leave it at that. And I appreciate them. Yeah. Yeah, you give me this feeling sometimes, like, you know, people are like, oh, he makes my, I have butterflies in my tummy, or make my soul feel like sunshine. <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid. But you, you're like that little tickling in my nose, like right before a sneeze. But it's not a bad sneeze, it's like a, it's a sneeze of love. <laughs> How much have you smoked today? Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't alter my thoughts. It just makes me less filtered about things because I'm less worried about embarrassing myself. The anxiety is not there. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I enjoy it all the same. Yeah, I'm less filtered, so. I'll be your sneeze. <laughs> Thank you. Let's get back to the email. What? <laughs> I love that you validate me like that. <laughs> Okay, back into the email. I really need to stop. I can just keep going with how obsessed I am with you. By implementing some of the tips from your podcast, my fiance and I have been able to find peace, understanding, and balance in each other again after pregnancy loss, infertility, and unhealthy coping mechanisms nearly tore us apart. Wow. I mean, that's a lot. It is a lot. That is so much to not just process, but to live through. And heal from it. 
Right. She's only been here since March. So she's right. done a whole lot of healing in a year. Mm-hmm. Or mending, working on healing. I don't know. I don't know how to word that. I will explain more below after the question, but now that our relationship is in a good place, marriage planning talks have been back on the table after putting them on pause for nearly a year to work on our issues. Wow. I support that, though. So do I. Like, if you guys, if everything was going great when you proposed and then a life-altering event happens and now you're questioning everything, I very much support putting marriage on hold. Yeah. It's not saying it won't happen. We just need to find a way to get through all of this heavy brush. We got to get the machetes out. But we're we're going to try to clear this path and get to the final destination. Right. And it being back on the table means that they were able to work together to clear that path to get to the final destination. That's yeah. a big deal. It is. And it shows that they're both willing to work through it when they're not obligated to do so. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they were able to just take it off the table. And now that it's back on the table, their marriage is going to be stronger because they've shown each other they're willing to fight for what they want. Right. And that they're willing to do the work mm-hmm. for each other. My big question is how important are prenups? Very. I concur. Should it be a deal breaker if my fiance does want one? No. Because it'll benefit you as well. I agree. Let's pause for a minute and talk about prenuptial agreements. Okay. <laughs> a prenuptial agreement is nothing more than an insurance policy. Right. If you got a million dollar home, <clears throat> you're going to get a million dollar policy on your fucking house, not a $20,000 policy on your house. Yeah. And and people be like, if I didn't have to get insurance by law, I wouldn't get insurance. Well, that's why you don't have a million dollar house, right? So right. like, let's be real here. When things are going really good and you guys are in love and you're able to navigate things without venom, right? Things are not hostile. You are in love. You can navigate everything that was previously had before the marriage started Mm -hmm. in terms of assets and go, okay, this goes back to him. This goes back to me. And then you can go in the event of a divorce. Here's how we're going to split assets. Here's how we'll do time management with the kids. And you can figure all of that out while you are still in love without any type of negative anything Mm -hmm. so that when the divorce Mm -hmm. happens, if somebody is hurt or salty, they can't come after you and try to change things. Right. Like for example, if the woman wants to try to take more, can't this is what we agreed upon right right yeah. or in the event that he wants to be a, a co-parent mm-hmm. she can't be like well you left me so you left you left the right to have your kid in your life right you only get to see him from 12 to 4 mm-hmm. on saturdays right mm-hmm. that's not a thing if you have a prenuptial agreement and you can put other clauses in there right and, and this the- is sorry go ahead so the prenuptial agreement is everything prior to the marriage. So if you guys get married and you start gaining assets like houses or businesses, all of that will be dealt with in the divorce. That's called marital assets. Correct. That will get split. Mm-hmm. And you can even put marital assets will be split 50-50. Yep. So in the event that you have a million dollar house and you owe 500000 on it and the house gets sold, you both get a quarter of a million dollars. Mm-hmm. Because the debt's wiped, you both get the money and that's that. Instead of going, well, she gets the house and the cars and the kids... And I get alimony, child support, nothing. Right. Right. A prenuptial agreement is there to protect both parties. It is nothing more than an insurance policy. Mm-hmm. 100% should get a prenuptial agreement. And there will yeah. always be people who are like, well, you can break a prenup and it's da, 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 da. Well, you get a good lawyer. Right. Don't, don't find a fucking legal Zoom document or mm-hmm. any of those bullshit internet mm-hmm. documents. Pay a lawyer. Right. Um, I have a guy in Florida. If you're in Florida and you want to have any of that shit drawn up, he he practices law in the state of Florida. I can totally hook you up with him. He's really fucking good at what he does. Mm-hmm. And for women, just for something to think about, mm-hmm. prenups, like my husband said, is supposed to benefit both parties. If you are with a man or a woman who appears to have controlling qualities and you are worried that later on in the marriage that you might become a stay-at-home mom and be under financial control you don't have your own car, those kinds of things. That prenuptial agreement saves you in those moments. Right. It absolutely does. You, yes. You could put a clause in there that says, if I'm going to be a stay-at-home wife when I leave, I want 50% of what's in the savings. Right. I want six months of spousal support while I get on my feet. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're in love, your person's going to agree to that. Of course, babe, I got you. Right. If and they have a problem with it. Right. What's the issue here? Like, why wouldn't that? Right. All things to think about. Yep. I think prenuptial agreements have a very negative um, uh, undertone undertone or overtone even because people think that it's to fuck people in the event of a divorce. It's not. It's to make sure that if there is a divorce that everyone is taken care of in a fair manner 
And it's going to be a lot more fair if mm-hmm. hashed out when you are in love than when you are in a vindictive fuck them mindset. <clears throat> Another thing to think about if, ch- if children are involved, because you said that you could add things like that. Time management. Time management. If you are with somebody who you are concerned about having children with, do not involve that in the prenup. What do you mean? So if say a woman is with a man or a man is with a woman and they have those vindictive controlling qualities like, oh, I hate that I said like. I listened to a Jordan Peterson thing this morning about being more eloquent with your speech. And he specifically said, if you like use like or um, and I'm like, oh, I do. That. I do. um. I, I hate it. You know why that is? It's a, it's a filler. It is mm-hmm. because you don't want somebody to interject. Right. And you also don't want to almost said, um, don't want to have those weird pauses. And with a podcast, when you have mm-hmm. those weird pauses, it, it makes people disinterested. Right. Because it'll only be a half a second for us. Mm-hmm. But when they're, they're listening, there's, you know, two or three seconds over and over and over again of gaps. People are like, come on, what the fuck, dude, speak up. Let's go. Right. Because we're used to short. Right. But that's. The like we did that to ourselves, right. like not just us, but like podcasters no, I, in general, like that's normal conversation. There will be pauses and breaks and processing and. Right. But that comes from the algorithm feeding us quick snippets right. of shit. That's why people mm-hmm. don't watch full length content. They want the shorts. Mm-hmm. They don't want the two hour episode. They want the 30 second nugget. They barely want the five minute TikToks. Yeah. No, they yeah. don't. They really don't. So back to what I was saying, if you are with a man or a woman who you are, you have a real concern that later down the line, children might be used as a pawn or they're going to be used as a bargaining chip. Well, if you don't do X, Y, and Z, I'm not going to allow you to see the kids this weekend. I wouldn't add in a 50, 50 split. Well, no, that you, you would, you would pre-plan that. Right. You would do that in the beginning. So you would want to put that in the prenup. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In well, the what event if you that- wanted full custody? you have to fight for that. Right. I mean, you're going to have to do that anyways. Kids are a different thing. If you can prove, because a lot of states are going mm-hmm. 50-50 now, if you can prove that the other parent is unfit, right, then you'll get full custody. We should have this conversation with Steve. I agree. Yeah. I, I think that parents shouldn't get full mm-hmm. custody of a kid unless they can actually prove that there is abuse or neglect. Right, or, or like an addiction going on, right. safeties and jeopardy. If right. you don't like the way that their house is... Say their house is messier than yours, right? Not neglect, but it's just slightly messier. Maybe they don't fold blankets or they only sweep once every two weeks and their floor is constantly having that dirt on it. That's not a reason for them not to have their children. You want a hot take? Yes. I don't think that people who pay child support or people Mm -hmm. who collect child support should be allowed to claim their kids on their taxes. Elaborate. If I made... If I made seven hundred thousand dollars a year and you made a hundred thousand a year, okay, my responsibility in child support is going to be six hundred percent more than yours is because I make six hundred percent more than you do. Okay, right. <clears throat> so if I have to pay child support at that six hundred percent more than you, it means that I'm paying a whole lot in child support on the fifty five forty five because our combined income is is eight hundred thousand. That's the okay. way that they figure child support. I'm going to pause you because I need to process all of that. So 700,000 versus 100,000. You are spending more on the child than I am. Right. Because our combined income is 800,000 and I have to pay 55% of that if you were the custodial parent. Okay. So if I'm paying 55% knowing that I make 700,000 and you make 100,000, mm-hmm. I should be the one who is able to claim the kids on the child's or on the taxes because mm-hmm. I am the one who is financially supporting the kids in gross. But only 5% more. No. Not only 5% more. Okay, so elaborate on that. You got your that. phone over there? I do. What is 55% of 800,000? It's going to be like 450 or 440, something. 440,000. Okay. 440,000. Okay, so where's that 340,000 coming from that you make? Because you only make $100,000. Okay, where is that what coming from? The $340,000 difference. $340,000 difference from the 800,000. Right, because you make 100,000 and I make 700,000. Well, it would be 300, 360,000. Okay, so where's that coming from? It's not coming from you. It's coming from me. So if I'm paying that 55% of child support, right. your fi- your 45% is no- nowhere near that because you don't make that. So I would have to pay that child support and you would have 45% of that supposed to be your duties, but you don't make 45% of that. Okay. So two totally different tax brackets I am seeing now Absolutely. just in that difference. Right. Because <clears throat> I did the 45% at the 100,000. Mm-hmm. It's only $45,000. Right. That is okay. 
So you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. So if you are floating almost half a million dollars for the children yearly. You should be able to claim them on your taxes. It wouldn't do any good at that point. No, it really wouldn't. But the mother should also have to pay taxes on the child support that's given to her, especially if she's able to use that money on things like her rent that she her would nails. have. Her nails. Anything. Okay. That is not designated for the kids. Right. So if you had a, a card, right, that's mm -hmm. like a, almost like an EBT card and you could only buy specific items for the kids, clothes, whatever's designated for survival, right? Mm -hmm. Rent should not be a part of that. Right. You, women want equality. If you have equality and a woman can do everything a man can do, why the fuck am I paying your rent? The child support should be going for the kids. And if you can't afford to pay rent and a home that's a one, two or whatever that you need for your then kids, you have the then you shouldn't have the children. The man yeah. should because he's making more money financially to support them. Now, that would speak into time and a whole lot of other things that would go into that, which is why this becomes so tricky. Right. But when it comes to child support, I have a whole lot to say on that topic. Well, everything you just said, I agree with. Right. It that makes sense. sense. Because It'd, flip of the coin, right. I'm a boss bitch woman. I'm a CEO of a company and I'm making $1.3 million a year. And that's my income after business expenses and whatever. And you're making 400000 and I'm paying that 55%. You wouldn't be. No, I wouldn't because I'm a woman. Right. You would have the kids. That 55% right. would still fall on the man. Why, though? I have the larger income. It does not matter because the okay. non-custodial parent has to pay the 55% of child support. Wow. Child support is a federal tax scheme. <sighs> Hang on. I, if, I, if you really look into what child support is and how the tax brackets work for that, it is a tax scheme. It is a federal fucking tax scheme. That doesn't make logical sense to me. If I'm making $1.3 million as my income that I can just spend, spend freely... And you're making four hundred thousand. You're still paying the fifty five percent. Yep, of the combined income. That's how they figure the the child support. It's fifty five percent of the kids' needs. But okay, yes. so I I really do view like in that specific situation, if the mother is making enough money to support herself and the children, and say the father just disappeared, he didn't want to be in the children's life. He really did like the deadbeat dad thing. I wouldn't even go after the father for the child support. There's no, I don't want to be in court for that. I don't want to deal with you. Like you abandoned, not just me as your woman, you abandoned your children. I'm, I don't right. want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with the headache. I would do that in both scenarios, man or woman. Right. Like. I think in that scenario, man or woman, let the other deadbeat parent go. Right. Go to court and be like, they disappeared. I can't find them. And I would like to go ahead and get it in writing that I am the custodial parent. Yes. And that if they would like to have visitation with the children, it needs to be mandated through the court and it needs to be supervised. 100%. Because then when he shows up or she shows up and wants to see the kids, you can be like, well, you're gonna have to contact the court system. Right. Here's my lawyer's information. Don't contact me again. Yeah. <clears throat> we really need to have that conversation with Steve. I texted him and waited to see if he would respond back. And he was like, I'll let you know. But that was three days ago. Mm -hmm. It's the weekend. It was coming into the weekend. Yeah. And I know that Thursdays and Fridays are court days for him. So he's a very busy dude. We may get a text back this afternoon. I, I don't know. Yeah. But he does want to be on the podcast. And that would be very good to have a family lawyer on here. Oh, yeah, it really would be. Um, I also have reached out to that behavior specialist. Okay. Um, and she has agreed to drive down from St. Pete to be on the podcast for a live stream and said that if it goes well, she would also like to do a podcast or garden segment. Okay. And that's good because she specializes in, in her specialty is in autism. Perfect. Yep. So that would be really beneficial to our listeners. Yeah. Beneficial. Mm. Beneficial. Oh, I said that. Didn't I say that? You no, said we created that. You said that. beneficial. Yeah, and then the yeah. finish fish. fish and it, 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 and it, a... it escalated to beneficial bowl, which yeah. is why we had that sticker design that we never printed. Crazy. Yeah, let's get back to the email. Okay. Should it be a deal breaker if my fiance does want one? He says it makes him hesitant and that I'm planning a way out of something that's supposed to be forever. We have a prenuptial agreement and we don't believe in divorce. We do, yeah. Right. Right. And like our faith obviously made that a whole lot different than what it was when we started courting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if you, it, I don't see it that way. I, I don't see it as you looking for a way out unless you're yeah. trying to be like in the event of a divorce, I get 75% of all of our assets. And obviously you're just looking for a come up. Right. But in the event that you don't have a prenuptial agreement agreed upon now while you're mm -hmm. in love, what do you think is going to happen when you go to court? Right. It's going to be fuck over. Historically, what men can lose. I do? Yeah. Yeah. Because of quality. I'm going to be honest. If I were a man in today's climate of trying to get into a relationship and pursue a marriage and be with somebody, 
I would be very hesitant about getting married without a prenup. Mm, I would Absolutely I terrified. It. Yeah. Wouldn't do it. Especially if you're a man who has assets. Correct. We, uh, we've actually talked to our lawyer also, um, Steve Leskovich and Punta Gorda, for those of you who are interested in who that guy was. Um, we just refer to him as Steve. He's kind of a friend of ours at this point. We've done mm -hmm. a lot of business with him, but um, we talked to him about the podcast and in the event that anything ever happened because it was not included in our prenuptial because we didn't have this then, how that would look. And he was like, well, in the event that you guys got a divorce, why would you just dissolve the podcast? I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, don't you think that that would make things better for you because you can show that you can still be amicable and like continue talking about life after a divorce and all that shit? And I was like, I mean, that would definitely make money. It would. But I don't know if I would want to do that. And, and like, you know, he then explained the marital assets of things. If we had a hundred thousand dollars in the savings account because of the podcast, we would just have to split that. But all the assets that I had before my business and mm -hmm. all of that is still mine. So it, it's good to have it. It's smart to have those things. Yeah. Back into the email. Mm -hmm. We have an intimate ceremony planned in August of this year, but this is the only request of my many that makes him uncomfortable of mine. So she's got a lot of, a lot of requirements. Okay. And this is the one that, that he's hung up on. So <clears throat> what if she's the breadwinner and he's getting married to her and she wants a prenuptial to protect her assets and he thinks that he's going to get married and get to come up if, if they split? Well, she just said that they have a six figure household. There you go. So I'm 23 and I own and operate my own housekeeping business. My fiance is 29 and is a foreman for a directional drilling company. Together, we are fortunately in a six-figure household, which is way more than either of us grew up with in the home. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I have found and grown my clientele over a two-year period. As of December 23rd, I went completely on my own with an employee after subcontracting to fill in the gaps while I grew my business. I personally have put so much time and energy into learning the ins and outs of quality, marketing, product management, taxes, people skills, legal meetings, and all the other things it takes to grow a business. Love all of that. And I still have so much to learn and utilize as it and I grow. Look into Google AdWords. Mm -hmm. If you are an entrepreneur and you are not using Google AdWords, you are fucking up so hard. Are we using Google AdWords? Oh, yeah, on everything except for the podcast. We don't need to because it's it's organic marketing. With gotcha. the podcast, we built a community. But I, I looked into that this morning for yeah. the podcast. I watched one of my businesses jump 30% in a month because of Google AdWords. It was a $500 investment. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn how to use Google AdWords and you have to market around time frames. Right. So like if you're selling something, gifts for dad around Father's Day, for example, would be really fucking smart because if you sell political t-shirts and your dad's a political guy and, and you type in gifts for dad and you see a political t-shirt site pop up, yep. you're going to go, shit, he'll, he'll wear that libertarian shirt. Let's buy that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Google AdWords is fucking huge. And if you sell online and you have an online store there, I actually have to have a consultation with Garrett today about this, mm -hmm. but there are ways to, to really get your best bang for buck on your CPM too. But you guys will have to research that on your own. I'm not giving that away for free. That's all you get. Okay. A little snippet. I love that. I live with you. Yeah. I just get all of this all the time. <laughs> yeah. I just get this all the time. You're so polite about it. It's fucking nonstop and you're not sick of this shit yet? No. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Why? Because I started that journey last night at 1.30 in the morning and picked it right back up at 6 a.m. Right. I, I don't, my brain doesn't stop. It's fucking exhausting. No, I get it. Like that's how I am with like the herbalism and mm -hmm. like I'm finally like starting to slow down on that, actually implement things instead of just information overload. Speaking of things that she's doing, by the time this video drops, your bath line may be on the website. Correct. So if you're watching this, go to tobebetter.co or www.tobebetter.com. Mm -hmm. Both of those are the same websites, but if you don't do the www. it doesn't work. I noticed the same thing with Jordan Peterson's website. Uh, it has something to do with the back end and I, I can't figure it out and I'm not yeah. willing to pay somebody to change it. I don't care enough to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but her bath product should be on there by then. And it'll go quick because when we post it, it will go fast. It I, will go quick. And yeah. it's very, very limited supply. So I am working with a stay-at-home mom. This has been her dream to do this. So it is all handmade, hand-produced. She's doing everything on her own. And from my understanding, 
We are getting, I can't remember the exact number. She's going to send me a final, final itemized list once everything is done. But I want to say there's going to be about 40 bars of each soap. And you're doing three soaps. Correct. Body three scrubs. Soaps. Yep. Mouse lip scrubs or whatever. Yes. Yeah, there'll be a um, lot there, but it won't last very long. So no. just if you guys are hearing this and that's something you're interested in, um, I would check the site every Sunday night because we we do all of our drops on Sundays. Correct. So when we do our live stream Sunday night on YouTube at 6 p.m., we normally drop between 6 and 8 because mm-hmm. we do it while we're on the live stream so that we can promote it. So if you're hearing this before April 1st, you should be, if that's what you want to do. Shameless plug. Don't. I need to find a name for the bath line. We'll figure that out. We have a month. It's February 9th right now, all recording this. So yeah. we're ahead quite a bit. What time is it? 11.15. Oh, it's only 11 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Back into the email. So I want something that states the business is mine in case we were to separate. With this, I'm starting to have the thoughts of am I being selfish? No, no, you're not. This is exactly the point of a prenuptial agreement. Okay, so I'm, I'm confused. She said, she asked, should it be a deal breaker if my fiance does want one? Does she mean he doesn't want one? Yeah, I, I would okay. say doesn't because she's the one that wants the prenup. Okay, so he doesn't want the prenup. So I, I wouldn't get married if he won't sign that paper. I agree. Th- this comes down to doing what's best, right? And if you love your person, regardless of the fact that you guys have a six-figure income, because that makes you middle class now. Did it you does. know that? You have to make six figures a year in the United States to be considered middle 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 income right now. Did you know um, this might middle be class. incorrect? This might be incorrect statistics, but... A four hundred forty thousand yearly income. You're top of the. You are part of the one percent in America. In the world. In the world. Yeah. If you if you make thirty thousand a year, mm-hmm. you're doing better than most of the world's economy. Wow. Yeah. There are countries in Africa that make less than two thousand dollars a year on average. People, there's countries all over the place that don't make money like we do here. Well, is that the third world countries? It, well, I mean, it's anybody that's not a first world country. But even even other first world countries don't make the money that we make here. And that's right. going to change. But but I think their cost of living is also not what we have. No, not even close. Yeah. That's why people are moving out of the country to live in places like Bali and fucking, yeah. you know, places in Mexico and other countries because it's super fucking cheap. It's also why a lot of the uh, passport bros end up going to other countries and staying there instead of coming back. Because they can get married, take on that address and get a different tax break and shit than they get in the United States. It's a whole different, you know, financial ball game. Yeah. Uh, back to the prenuptial agreement, though. This is your business. Right. If Peaches and I got together and she was an entrepreneur and we were getting married and she's like, look, these are my assets. I built this and I don't want you to be able to take it from me in the event of a divorce. You have to sign this paper. And I'm like, no. What would that tell you? That's terrifying. Right. Like, why... Are you trying, like, would you want to try to fuck me over if things went bad? That's how I, I take that. Yeah, 100%. Yep. I, I think what's yours before the marriage should be yours after the marriage. I agree. Prenuptial agreements and trusts. That would take me down a whole new avenue. Like, we're no longer talking about the prenup. Why are Why are you so uncomfortable with me wanting to keep what I built? Right. I agree. And that's why these conversations need to be had when you're in love. Right. And not after the fact when you're being vindictive. Yeah. I trust this man with everything and truly never see this relationship ending. But most people think that when they get married. Yes, they do. Everyone thinks that when they get married. Our relationship has been rocky in the past. We've definitely grown from it. However, I have this anxious feeling that lightly lingers sometimes of having to still protect what I've worked my ass off for. In my life, I've seen a lot of bitter breakups and divorces, as has he. Then I get in my head thinking, does that mean I don't trust him? Okay, so rocky things have happened in the past. You want a prenup, and he says it's like you are preparing for the relationship to end, and that's a concern for him. So I don't think it's a lack of trust per se. I think that there is a concern there for him because of the rocky past that you're preparing for it to end anyway. Well, if that's the case, why would he marry you? Yeah. No, like that's his thought process. Right. But why would he marry her if that's the case? If he believes that she's just looking for an out, why get married? Why why go through the process of having to go through a divorce and deal with all of that bullshit if you're worried that your partner's not in it for the long haul? Mm-hmm. A prenuptial agreement shouldn't discourage that. Right. I would also like to say, and this is not legal advice because I'm not a lawyer, However, if I was in this situation, my response to him not wanting to sign a prenuptial agreement would be to create an S-corp, to put that S-corp into a trust so that the trust owns the S-corp 
before you get married. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, your trust, your trust owns your S Corp, which is your business. Right. The marriage does not get that because the trust owns the S Corp. I'm almost positive that's how that works. And that would protect your business if you refuse to sign. But I would still contact a lawyer and ask. I was say, if you want to know better information, call a lawyer. Yeah. More accurate. Yeah. I'm almost positive that's how that works. But it's not legal advice. I would contact a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I'll put Steve Leskovich's information in the description. Um, if you're in Florida, that can help you. But I, I don't know if you'll be able to uh, ask that question if you're in another state. So, Some backstory. We were 21 and 27 when we first got together. For context, we've been together for three years in July and completely rushed the hell out of our relationship. High sight is 2020, and we both figured out along the way that neither one of us has healed from previous relationships or childhood trauma. That's a problem. We met celebrating our birthdays at a rave and became inseparable from our first date. I moved into his apartment three months after dating, and there really wasn't much of a courting stage in our relationship maybe a month. I literally met his entire family five days in. Then a month after meeting, we were off at a music festival where we became official. Looking back, I see that expectations, boundaries, and really even a background of knowing the other really wasn't established. And we were wrapped up in the new loveliness, fun, and lust of each other. Yep. That happens. It does. And that's also why those rose-colored rose glasses come off and everything falls apart in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yep. I also had him painted to be the perfect person. I will admit I was in a really immature mentality of, I'm going to date this older man and he's going to take care of me and all of my problems. He's going to fix everything and make it all better. Night and shining Arma kind of vibes, but come to find out that's a bunch of toxic bullshit and no one's going to save me from myself. No, she said it, so I don't have to. I'm just going to say I agree. Yeah. Yeah, you said it. Sis you said it, sister. I got nothing. <laughs> Our daughter <laughs> is so excited that she's learning to snap, guys. That just made me think of every day when I pick her up. She's like, hey, mom. And I was like, oh, I can tell you're practicing. She's like, I am. She has that sass about her. I love it. Yeah, you won't in about five years. Mm, then we'll just have to... It'll be a battle of the sass and she will yield. <laughs> in a few of your earlier podcasts, you called out the person who subconsciously wants a parent out of their partner. And I see that. And I see now that I tried to put that on him. Yeah, your husband and your wife doesn't want to be your mom or your dad. Nope. Also, I was in my masculine and power struggled with him. I was raised to believe I didn't need a man and could do it on my own. You hear how contradictory that is? What that 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 sentence contradicts everything she said in the previous paragraph. Oh, right. Like, I want you to take care of me and make me better, but I'm going to challenge you and make it hard as fuck. I get an older man, knight in shining armor, is going to fix my life, take care of me, blah, 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 blah. But I don't need a man. Yeah. And I can do it on my own. Yeah. yeah. Feminism, ladies and gentlemen. I ordered a book that's going to be here today. Yeah. It is called The Second Sex. I cannot remember her name, but she was a French feminist in the 70s. And I heard somebody talk about one of her arguments was that working women do not have free will or free power the way that feminism likes to say that you do. Like, Of course not. You still got to submit to your boss. Right. Like you have the option to be at home or go to work. And it was studied and shown that a vast majority of women would rather stay at home because like you said, when you go to work, you're still submitting to somebody. Yep. That whole women going to work movement was made solely so that you guys would pay taxes. Yeah. It was a cash grab. Mm -hmm. They monetized. Once again, the government has found a way to monetize. Well, us. it's more than that, though, too. They destroyed the nuclear family because right. now you get two people going to, to work. Your children are right. unattended. You split up the home so it relieves the tax. The tax burdens have changed, mm -hmm. right? So now taxes are greater because you no longer get the discounts that you get for being married. And then on top of that, with federal child support scam, they make more money that way, too. It, it is all a scam. Yeah. All of it. Our... <laughs> Our government is the biggest MLM pyramid scam that there is. Yep, I hate all of it. Back into the email. Mm -hmm. For the first year and a half, it wasn't bad, but I noticed he had what was coming across as anger issues to me, and I would pull the I'm leaving card to control the situation. Then it would make everything worse. 
course it was. You're manipulating him. I noticed he had what was coming across as anger issues to me. So it was a perceived anger issue. You weren't really listening to what he was trying to communicate to you. So to control the situation, you would say, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Well, it said perceived as anger issues. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he did, but right. that I'm going to leave to control the situation. She said that. Right. She was using it to manipulate him. Yeah. After our first out of control fight, we get, did get into couples as well as individual therapy for personal mental health. We figured we'd rather iron out these miscommunication issues because we were worth growing past it and creating a relationship that wasn't physically, emotionally, or mentally abusive like we both saw our parents in through our childhoods. Okay. I'm processing a lot. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. So I'm going to say a lot of things out loud and I'm going to hit you with a question. So we have said under no circumstance would we try to work out physically abusive, right? Mm -hmm. At what point do we allow room for the abuser to grow to try not to be that person that they once were because they have come to recognize that their behavior is, it's condemnable. It is disgusting human behavior. So when can we say, okay, you told me that you don't want to hit me anymore. We are going to therapy. When is that okay? It's not okay. The moment that you feel unsafe in any fashion, any fashion, right. it's over. We're going to go ahead and separate. We're going to end the marriage or the relationship until you get therapy and I can feel safe around you again mm -hmm. because this is not okay behavior and my safety means more to me than your anger or your bouts of anger or whatever it is that you're going through, your inability to control yourself. So I will love you from a distance. I may not even do that. You put your fucking hands on me. Okay. Right. You in that mindset, but a lot of women who need to leave those situations. If you got verbally abusive and mm -hmm. started calling me names, we're done. Right. I, I wouldn't do that. I would never, ever marry somebody who treated me that way, mm -hmm. ever. And in the event that it started happening after marriage, we're going to counseling and therapy, and we're going to get to the root of this shit right away because I'm not going to be treated like that. Right. I, I, don't, I don't think that anybody should ever stay in a situation where they do not feel safe. Okay. Period. I have watched too many women get the fucking shit beat out of them because they stay with people who start off with calling them name and slamming doors and punching holes in the wall and then end up breaking their face. Yeah. Or hitting them with an ashtray and giving them a concussion. Like, we're not, I'm not fucking, I'm not about that at all. Mm -hmm. At all. And, and I know men who have been fucking cut and stabbed and shot at and like hit with a frying pan. I know a guy who got his teeth knocked out by his wife with a frying pan, cast iron, hit him right in the face while he was talking to her. He wasn't even yelling. Just, just didn't like what he was saying. Yep. Smacked him right in the face with it. You know how heavy a cast iron is? Oh, I do. I'm Southern. I fucking know all about the cast iron. I just, I, man, I don't get that shit. I agree. People change and people grow. I think that I agree with what you said. I, I would not stay in a situation where I do not feel safe. You put my your hands on me once like that is it. I'm going to go stay somewhere else. Figure out shit and then there has to be therapy, change of action. The trust needs to be rebuilt. There's no coming back from physical violence. So it, it, there is no, no coming back from that. It, so in a marriage, unfortunately, that's a different situation because you've made a covenant with God and that's my faith. Right. But there's, there's ways around that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you need to go to therapy and, and like it needs to happen before physical violence starts. When right. the signs of, of threatening behavior happens, mm -hmm. it's time to start the therapy. The moment that something becomes physical, it is unredeemable. Okay. Period. I, I don't care who you are or how long you've been together. The moment your person puts their hands on you in a violent manner that's not fun sexually. Right. That shit's done. Okay. Do you think that the person who is the aggressor can change though? Doesn't matter if they can or not. It's going to be changed with a different person. That's I, what I mean. It doesn't matter who they're with or not. Like, do you think that person can change? Period. Maybe. I, I think anybody can change. The mountains change. Right. But I, I don't think that. I would ever stick around to find out if they're going to. I agree with that. So, some things just aren't okay. People who, who physically abuse the people they love or, or mentally, I'm, it's just not, a, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. I have way too much childhood trauma okay. from abuse to fucking ever think that that's okay. Ever. I was just asking because there are people in situations like that right now. Nope. 
thinking, oh, can he change? Will he change? Will she change? Will Maybe. she stop doing what she does? Maybe, but you shouldn't be there while they figure that out. Yeah. What happens one night when he, when they come home drunk mm-hmm. and you didn't do the dishes and now you've got two black eyes and a fucking fat lip and yeah. a cut above your cheek. Yeah. What if the next time they start hitting your kids? Right. What happens the next time if you don't wake up? Yeah. I, that's just. Mm-mm. Okay. I received a CPTSD and BPD diagnosis while he was diagnosed with bipolar. That's crazy that they got both of those because borderline and CPTSD is is so fucking similar. Yeah. I wonder if they diagnosed both because they weren't sure. Yeah. Because it's hard to separate those two. Mm -hmm. Okay. From there, our therapist started to help us learn and understand what's happening in each other's brain during conflict or just in general. And things were amazing. Maybe some accidental raised tones, but nothing that wasn't caught and then solved. We were in tune with ourselves and each other. Then we ended up pregnant in June of 2022. We were extremely excited and sadly miscarried at the beginning of October. My loss was traumatic and I ended up going septic and needing surgery with a lot of aftercare. And he provided that for me. There's so much respect and gratitude for him in my heart after the way he cared for me post-surgery. After the months of grief, comma, our loss broke us as people and in our relationship. All of my personal growth regressed and I became this hollow, miserable, hateful person and he became closed and masked with anger. Right, because you're both hurting and you're not able to communicate that. Right, so... Where's therapy at in all of this? I would have gone straight back to therapy. Right. I actually want to talk about that. But before we get to that, I, w- I want to go back to the abuse conversation. Okay. I don't think that a screaming match between two people are angry is abusive. Right. right that's raw motion in the moment. If it, it can be. Yeah. If it calms down and there's like, hey, we don't talk to each other like that. Like, damn you. Right. Okay. We need to check ourselves right now. Right. If I'm, if you and I are having conversations and I feel like you're not listening and you feel like I'm not listening and we're yelling to get our point across, Mm -hmm. that's very different than me calling you a see you next Tuesday and telling you to fucking listen to me or being super aggressive with the way that I'm screaming. It's a very different thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to separate those two because some people raise their voice when you say what. Right. That's the natural human reaction is to increase the volume because they didn't hear me. Right. Um, As for this aspect, Mm -hmm. we talked a little bit in one of the earlier episodes. Um, It might have been a standalone email that we read, but men don't process a miscarriage the way women do. No. But it doesn't mean that we don't feel it. Mm -hmm. It just means that it's not to the same level. So this situation is a whole lot of communication, and it fucking needs therapy because he's not going to understand what you're going through. Right, and... That's one of those moments as somebody who has experienced a miscarriage, I was not able to properly articulate myself and what I was experiencing and what I was going through and right. all of the chaos in my brain. Because that's not taught. Right. You need a mediator and all of that. Yep. Back into the email. So I'd say we were exhausted from life and severely depressed. I agree. Together, we spiraled into addiction as a way to cope, if you can call it that, with the loss. So no longer going to therapy or working on ourselves anymore. The mix of everything created a nuclear war zone within our home. 24-7, we couldn't go five minutes without saying something shitty to the other. I didn't feel love or seen and felt alone in our loss, so I nagged the hell out of him, which fed into him being more closed off and angry when I would try to voice my frustrations. So you poked the bear and then got mad at him for it. Right. That makes a whole lot of fucking sense, doesn't it? No. (laughs) No. No, it doesn't. I can see how deep into the self-pity and the hurt. And there's a lot of narcissism that goes with, well, you should just know better. You should know me. And I can see how that poking the bear strategies like that eye for the eye. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I picked up our dinner last night. I promise, guys, this ties in. And my meal was a meal. There was supposed to be a Coke Zero with it. And I got there and I sat in the car and they came out and they were like, what was your name? And I provided my name and they brought the food out. There were multiple opportunities for me to go, hey, where's my drink? Don't forget my drink. Hey, I paid for a drink. I didn't do that. I was on our street 20 minutes away from the restaurant going, I didn't get my fucking drink. And the petty in me wanted to call this restaurant 
and go, hey, I just picked up an order from you guys and you forgot my drink. And their answer to the sol- their solution would be, well, come if you want to come get it, we will give you another one for free for the inconvenience, whatever it is. I know I would not have driven 20 minutes back to that restaurant to get my drink because that's 40 minutes of my food sitting there. Mm-hmm. That would have been purely like just to let you guys know you fucked up and my night's ruined. Right. What's that solving? Absolutely nothing. They are already stressed. They probably forgot my drink because they're overwhelmed. They're doing a lot of orders. When I pulled up, there were four other cars waiting for their to-go orders. They're clearly slammed. It took a lot in me. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't take a lot in me. It took a lot for me to get to that point of going, there's really no point in me letting them know that they fucked up. Right. There's also an accountability in what you said, knowing that you had plenty of opportunity to speak up and you didn't. Right. You handed me my bag of food, but hey, where's that cup? <laughs> yeah. Where's my drink? Yeah. Back into the email. Mm-hmm. One day I had reached my limit and I needed help. I didn't like who I saw in the mirror. I moved out and went to a friend's house in February of 2023 and got sober. We stayed in contact, but I guess he noticed I wasn't putting up with the bullshit anymore and he got sober. We lived separately for three months while we unintentionally rebuilt our trust and and connection. Then with stipulations, we got back together. During that time of separation, I found your podcast, started listening to the love languages, and understanding your partner's mental health and extending grace. The choice theory book breakdown was so eye-opening and really helped me start breaking my actions down. That really started to impact change in me. Having the tips of your podcast while we were resetting boundaries and doing check-ins really opened our communication and minds open. So I just want to plug the garden real quick. If you really enjoyed the breakdown of the choice theory book, I am doing book breakdowns centered around being a good woman and being a good wife on my garden segment on our Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, I highly recommend it. If it's not for you, I also understand that. The most recent book breakdown I have done is The Proper Care and Feeding of a Husband by Laura Schlesinger. There was a lot of useful information in that book, a lot of things that made me Just kind of shift my perspective on myself and my own marriage. And the next book I will be breaking down is the timeless woman for the fantastic woman or the fantastic woman for the timeless woman. It was written in the 70s about how to be a good wife, to be a good mother. And I'm very excited to do that with you guys. So if that's something that you're interested in, our Patreon is linked down below in the description. Also, the the check-ins that she's speaking about in the email is also on our website. We have a PDF download that you can get off of our website and their video itself is on our website pinned so that you don't have to try to find the YouTube channel or Mm -hmm. find it on the YouTube channel. Um, But it is on to be better.co. I I should have ended that statement with a period. So I listened. (laughs) So I, I did my spiel about Patreon and I left it open ended. I didn't finish it with a statement. Our Patreon's linked in the description below if you wanted to check it out, period. The inflection in my voice led to believe that there was more to that statement. I embarrassed myself (laughs) internally. This is all from that Jordan B. Peterson video I listened to this morning. I was taken down the Christmas tree. I know it's February 9th, but I love looking at it. March by the time (laughs) this drops. Mid-March or the end of March. Yeah, it is. (laughs) And I just took down our Christmas tree today. That's fine. And I was listening to Jordan B. Peterson, like I said earlier. And that moment of me plugging the Patreon, I was not confident in my speech. And that's one of those things that eloquent people do. And I'm making a mental note that I need to end my statements with a statement and not open-ended as if it's a question. Because that makes me feel like I'm unsure with myself, which I am, which is why I'm working on this. Also, if you guys want to know what books we're reading, we have a recommended reading list on the website as well that you can download. Um, There are Amazon affiliate links on there. So in the event that you buy a book, we get a very small percentage. Mm -hmm. It's very small. I think we made like 300 bucks over the entire year last year. Yeah. And that's with us pushing the shit out of that book list. So it's it's really not. We're making sense. Yeah. Dollar a day. Yeah. For a dollar a day. (laughs) It, it, it's Amazon's way of saying thank you for directing people to this. Yeah, it is. That's all it is. Before we get back into this, can I like drop an idea real quick? Mm-hmm. So I have been thinking about getting into writing again. 
What was that sign? Because you have zero free time. I know I do. And you're constantly like, I want to do this new thing that's going to take a whole lot of time. Yeah, but I, I, I do have free time. It's just time that I take to sit on the couch for an hour. Okay. It's my decompression time throughout the day. So you're going to fill it with something else and get rid of your self-care decompression time? No, because me writing could be a form of self-care for me. Instead of sitting on the couch for an hour scrolling on TikTok, I can sit on the couch for an hour and just write. Okay. It was journaling. I, I, I vibe with that. Not journaling. I think I want to do like little short stories, but they're productive short stories. I want to be Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> I, I want to be Socrates. I want to write out thoughts, but not so philosophically because they're hard to digest sometimes. Like I'm, I'm Googling words that don't exist anymore. <laughs> So if you guys are interested in that, it might might be something that we just post to our Patreon because there should be incentive for Patreon. I agree. And that's one of those things where if you're if you're truly interested in my writings, let me know in the comments down below. And if it does happen, it comes to fruition. It'll be posted to our Patreon. What do you think about that? I think that if you're changing the hour of time that you're scrolling into an hour of time with something else, as long as you are not overextending yourself, I don't care. Because if I overextend myself, it makes your life a little bit it worse. It makes my life a whole lot worse. Yeah. Because I don't have my wife at that point. I have yeah. a shell of a woman and I don't want that. So. I understand. I want to support you in all the cool shit that you want to do and, mm -hmm. and be there for you and cheerlead you. But if it comes to the de the detriment of your mental health, I'm not about it. I appreciate that. So. There's an honesty in that. And I appreciate if you notice that I'm doing too much, you're like, hey, you need to slow down. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point of being married, right? Is yeah. to have somebody else hold you accountable for your shit when you're failing to do so. So the choice theory, the choice theory book breakdown started to help her change her actions. That really started to impact change in me. Having the tips of your podcast while we were resetting boundaries and doing check-ins really opened our communication and minds. We're now to a point, again, where we have a 10 to 15 minute pit stop to talk out a problem, get it resolved, and get on with our days. We both still have our bad mental days, but we're much better about giving space and grace when required. So thank you to Be Better Team for all of your efforts and energy you put into helping people with your personal development. Once I heard Peaches say, maybe you're the fucking problem, and Chris you're the common denominator in all of your failed relationships. Yep. And with all of that, I would have lost the man who fathered my lost child. And for that, I'll always support you all. Oh man, that last little bit got me emotional. Yep. With all of that, I can see both sides of our worries. And I'm thinking that if we can make it through that and come back together stronger, is a prenup really needed? Yes. Yes, it is. I am going to say yes. So... This is me. Whenever I give advice on the podcast, whether it come across super shitty or super like blunt and brutal, am I talking too much? You keep looking at the time. I'm making sure the mixer is working. I okay. am so paranoid at fucking technical failures because shit keeps failing. Yeah. So like I'm I'm okay. I'm checking. Okay. Um. So whenever I give advice and I put myself in your shoes, I am giving motherly womanly wifely advice like this is not something that i wouldn't do myself right you guys simultaneously experienced a very terrible loss in life and you perceived it very differently right there's different perceptions different experiences there's different mental processes happening different emotions and you were able to come back from that that's dope a lot of people aren't able to recognize the person that they're with anymore after a loss like that because they weren't their needs weren't met in the moment the way they needed it. And there's a lot of resentment built up. You guys fell into addiction. You bounced back from all of it. I would still get the prenup. Good faith, when it really boils down to it, can mean nothing because there are people who have devoted their lives to God, have lost something, and have burned that bridge. Like, I, I can't believe I ever believed in him. I can't believe that I ever thought that he was a good God. Like faith is a very fickle thing and that's why it's of a mustard seed, right? It just takes a little bit of it. 
I would ask your fiance, if I were you, do you feel that this prenup will be one sided? Do you feel that if we were to get married that I might screw you over because you haven't had a say in what the prenup would be? Prenuptial should be right. an agreed upon contract that benefits both parties. If the conversation <clears throat> has been, so me and you are this chick and her man. And I just come to you and say, babe, I want a prenup and I want the prenup because I have my own business. And that's the whole conversation. What would your response be? Okay. Just okay? Yeah. It's your business. Okay. I don't want to clean. Right. No, but would you have like an, okay, well, you do have your business. Say that you have certain assets that you've invested money in. Okay. Let, let's look at it this way. Right. Your bath line. Yeah. Let's say this becomes like a multi-million dollar thing. Okay. Other than the initial financial investment. Mm-hmm. I put zero into your bath line. Right. So in the event, because that's a marital asset at this point, it's a business that started after we've got married. Mm -hmm. In the event of a divorce, I could come after you for some of that business and some of the proceeds from that. I don't want that shit. Why Why would I want to take something from you that you built? Right. That's petty behavior. Mm -hmm. I'll fucking show her I'm good on that. Yeah. Go live your best fucking life. Don't ask me for money. I'm not going to ask you for money. We couldn't work as a, a couple. I'm not vindictive. I'm not angry about it. Go live your fucking life. Right. Now, if I if I built a clothing line and I did all the marketing, all the research, the financial investment, and all you did was give me ideas for shirts here and there, and we got a divorce and you tried to come after me for the t-shirt line, I would feel just as fucked up about that as if I went after your bath line. Right. I agree with that. I think you should recognize the work and efforts that people put in. And if you had nothing to do with that, you shouldn't take it. You shouldn't try to take... If the bath line was something that we did together and it was men and women and I'm developing beer bombs and oils and soaps and mm -hmm. man smelling shit, campfire tobacco and gunpowder. Right. That might actually be a really good soap for you. I was just thinking that, okay, like <laughs> maybe we should branch off a little bit. This is just tapping. <laughs> in. We're just dipping our toes right now to see if anybody wants to buy a bath line from yeah. us. <laughs> so but we it, can branch off. But in the event that I had my hand in that and I put in hours and like I actually did research, mm -hmm. right? And I created... That would be a different conversation. I would want my fair share of my efforts. Now, if you had a bath line and we started making everything in house and I did nothing more than help you prep the soap, right? Or make the product. And I wasn't marketing. I wasn't advertising. I wasn't dealing with the finances of it. I had nothing to do with it other than you and I spending time together making soap on a Sunday. I don't deserve any of your hard work. Right. We spent time together on a Sunday listening to music singing, dancing, having conversations while we made soap. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I would have any right to anything that you did there. You could have done that all on your own. I chose to help you out because we're, we're spending time together at that point. Yeah. Right? So it really comes down to perspective and it comes down to the type of person people are. If this dude had a $20,000 a year job and she was making a million dollars, of course he's going to want some of that money. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have that kind of money when he got there. He shouldn't have that kind of money when he leaves. Right. Feel that way about women who get married to rich men too. You can hate on that if you want to. Yeah. If you are with somebody who is an entrepreneur and they have the money and they are willing to support you in your own endeavors, why wouldn't you want to create your own endeavors? Because a lot of people are happy with a free ride. And Just a piggybacking And like a lot that? of women know that in the event that she gets bored and leaves, 70 to 80% of divorces are um, initiated by women. Right. She gets half. If there's no prenuptial agreement there, she gets a whole lot of money, mm -hmm. a whole lot of everything, especially if he creates new businesses while they're married. Yeah. Because it's a marital asset at that point. There's ways around that, obviously, but those people still get fucking tons of money. So why why create something when I can freeload while we're married and when I get tired of you, I can just go ahead and get my millions and find another rich man because I'm in a good tax bracket now. And I just play that game. I don't, I, I understand the mindset. It's a very filthy mindset. Mm -hmm. I just, I couldn't fathom that myself. I'm not that kind of, I'm not that quality of person. Yeah. I heard a video I was scrolling. I'm, I'm really moving away from TikTok for my short form content. And I'm moving more towards YouTube because that's where I'm getting like my Jordan B. Peterson content and um, John Delaney. Deloney. Deloney. John Deloney. I'm so bad at names. <laughs> Bless you, sire. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Do I still make you laugh of or is it just ridiculousness at this point? It is ridiculousness, but it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And it was from the Whatever podcast. And they had one of those. He's a really bright dude. What is his name? I want to say it was like Matthew something. He has his own YouTube channel. He does his own content. He's more of a political guy. And he was chatting with the women that they have on that podcast. And he asked them, do you really think that by the time you're done doing OF content that there will be the caliber of man who wants to wife you up and do the traditional thing and like take care of you and do all of that kind of stuff? And they were like, no, like the kind of men that we are looking for aren't that kind. Like we want the same quality of guy who has the mentality that we do, that modesty isn't equated to like sexual preferences and all those kinds of things. And one girl said, well, I know at the end of this, I know that there will be a rich man who wants to wife me up. And he was like, and the guy said, well, do you think that's going to be the quality of man that you want though? Like he found you on a corn website. What makes you think that he will stop watching corn just to appease you? Yeah. I don't think that a rich man like that is going to want a woman like that. I I don't. Yeah. I I really truly don't. I know that there are men out there who don't give a shit. and There Mm -hmm. are some, I, I don't. I, why would I want to put a ring on something that another man can see for three dollars? Right. I'm good on that shit. Fuck that. I ain't sharing my shit. Another email. Yeah. This is probably a long shot. Hi, hello. I have seen you guys all over TikTok, and recently I have been needing some advice. Ooh, so if you really like us on TikTok, you'll like us on YouTube. Yeah, way more content. Which, if you guys are listening on YouTube or any other streaming platform, if you aren't subscribed, I highly recommend subscribing. You don't want to miss out on any content. And I highly recommend hitting that notification bell. We do pop-up lives. We do random bonus releases. And you don't want to have six months go by and we do a really cool update and then you, you're out of the loop. Yep. You don't know what's going on. You're just seeing random TikToks and you're like, what's this? Our goal this year is to hit 250,000 subs on YouTube. More than 164 down. almost. So we have 90... Mm-hmm. 86,000 to go. We can do it. I know we can. Just, you guys can do it. You guys can do it. <laughs> <laughs> the more subscribers we have, the easier it would do for the easier it would be for us to do meet and greets and seminars. Right. Because we'd actually have a following worth right. we spending would have, money on. There would be the demand. Yep. We looked I've been been really looking into the seminar thing. It's going to cost a lot to do that because we have to pay for our travel and then we have to re- rent a, a, like a you know a conference room at wherever mm. we're staying and shit that shit gets expensive that's why people do speaking fees i know yeah well it's why they sell tickets to them too what should a girl do if her fiance happened about two years ago just admitted to thinking about he is in love with both me and another girl that sentence made my brain hurt okay i'm gonna read it again what should a girl do if her fiance this happened about two weeks ago just admitted to thinking that he is in love with both me and another girl. Is that the whole email? That's the first sentence. Okay, let's continue reading because... Knee-jerk reaction is not the first reaction. Well, knee-jerk reaction is if he loves somebody else, why the fuck is he your fiance? Right. Are, Are you guys in agreement that polyamory is a thing? Right. Because if not, if you have the understanding that you're going to be a monogamous relationship and he's Mm -hmm. in love with another woman. That's cheating. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Your man has moved the fuck on. Yeah. Um, Me personally, as a girl, I would take that information and I would sit with it for a minute. I wouldn't even ask any probing questions. That's enough for me. That's that's different than cheating. It is different than cheating. That is that is intimate on a deep level. Right. To love somebody, you, a lot of you guys out there in your early like six month relationship saying I love you, you don't truly love that person. You don't know them well enough to know that person. You're in lust. Right. To actually love somebody, to love somebody through addiction, to love somebody through their depression, to love somebody on their day where their fucking demons are just devouring them. That, oh man, that would fuck me up. If you came to me during our engagement period and was like, hey, I know that we're we're getting married in October. I've been really thinking about this and I think I should let you know I'm in love with somebody else. Okay, I want you to be happy. You can go be happy with that somebody else. I think that would be my response. Yeah. I would be so devastated and heartbroken. Everything that I knew was fake. That does It's not necessarily true. No, I know, but that but, would be like my first reaction was it was all fake 
nothing is fake. It happened. Like I listened to, I can't remember what it was, but a guy came to his wife and said, I think I'm gay. And she was like, so our last 15 years of marriage has been a lie. And the person that she called into to seek for advice said, no, it wasn't because while he was struggling with his demons, he still chose to love you and interact with you on those days. Right. The birthdays happened. The Valentine's Day happened. Christmas right. happened. This is a story that you're telling yourself to be a victim. Right. It's it fake. Is. That's, that's, that's you telling yourself a story to be a victim. 100%. And he said that too. I think it was John Deloney. Yeah, I would believe that. That dude's smart as shit. Yeah. We're going to get big enough to be able to have him on the podcast. One I day. would love that. Fucking love that dude's books. I am on a binge of listening to his phone calls. Yeah, he's a badass. He claims that she just gets him and that he feels like the spark that he and I had disappeared after I had lost our baby in November. Here we go with the fucking baby thing again. There is a theme today. Yeah. Well, apparently there is. This is a theme for more than just today, though. This has been going on for like a month now. You guys, if you're going to get, if you get pregnant, mm -hmm. if you listen to this podcast and you guys get pregnant, you need to do a whole lot of fucking research, right? Not not on just like baby names. That's mm -hmm. the cute shit. You need, to, you need to Google miscarriages and the effects that it has on the body and the psyche. You need to Google... Um, the postpartum depression. Postpartum depression, right. I kept postpartum psychosis. I wanted to say prenatal vitamins. I don't know where the <laughs> fuck that was coming from. No, prenatal from. vitamins are also very, very important, guys. Right. Please don't skimp out on those. But there's a whole lot of things that go into that that you guys need to be researching for the in case of. Mm -hmm. If you are talking about, hey, we want to have a baby one day, this is part of your fucking research. Yes. Because otherwise you're going to have a whole lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So without going any further in the email, they fell out of lust, got pregnant. She lost a baby. She probably got depressed, had a whole lot of hormonal issues that comes yeah. with, with a, a, a miscarriage. And he doesn't know how to deal with any of that shit. Right. So now he feels like the relationship's fucked up. The love isn't there anymore. She mm -hmm. feels the same way. They're at fucking odds because they're not talking to each other about what the root of the problem is. Right. And he probably found somebody mm -hmm. new and was, is complaining about what's mm -hmm. going on at home, discussing the relationship shit outside of the home and had some new shiny talking about, I would never do that to you. Right. Oh, he, he, he. It's so cute. Yeah. They're fun and energetic while you're fucking miserable because your relationship is failing and you have resentment and you don't have to fucking talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's how he feels. It, it, why would you want to be attached to somebody who's fucking miserable all the time? Right. I agree with that. And if there's no steps taken to try to alleviate what's causing the depression. Or to understand it. Right. Or to understand it. Yeah. This is me going out on a limb. This is me assuming things. This person used the verbatim or the verbiage. What should a girl do if her fiance... So I've watched a lot of videos recently. A lot of it has stuck with me. And I think he was 98 year old. There was a 98 year old gentleman who was interviewed for something. And he said, nowadays you will hear a man go, Joanne told me that I had to do this. Not my wife, Joanne. Joanne told me that we had to be here. There is a, not a disassociation. We don't pay attention to what we say anymore because definitions don't mean anything right well that's because everything has been skewed so our words are meaningless right so i'm assuming that this is a very young person oh, I'm, I'm sure these are two very young people who don't understand what it means to have mental maturity to understand what another human being is going through and all of these things i would have said I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't be in this position because I wouldn't be engaged to somebody who's telling me they're in love with somebody else. To, to pose that question, though, if I were to ask this now, ask me, I would say, what would a woman do if her fiance came to her and said that he is in love with another woman? Because we're women, right? We are doing adult things. You guys are engaged to be married. And you, having babies. Right. You had a miscarriage. You guys are doing very adult things to refer to one another as childish ways shows that there's kind of a gap between the thinking or the thinking and the action, the processing and the actions. Does that make sense? He says, I am no longer the person he had fallen in love with because I have self-esteem and trust issues as well as my depression 
has been getting worse since the miscarriage, but can't imagine losing me as a friend. He's trying not to hurt you. Oh, yeah. This dude's already done. Yeah, it's over. He's in love with somebody else and he doesn't want to lose you as a friend. You are already a friend to him. Why does she have trust issues? What's happened to make the trust issues a thing? Because if the trust issues weren't there in the beginning, something's happened to make that a thing. Other than the fact that he said he was in love with another woman. Right. I I got caught up on that too. The trust issues and the low self-esteem. Those things go hand in hand. That's also not a him problem. That's a you problem. Unless he did something to break your trust, you not trusting him is a you problem. Yeah, I was about to say like... So is your low self-esteem. If you don't compliment me, but you compliment other women and like are sliding into women's DMs, I would 100% have trust issues and low self-esteem. That speaks on something very different though. Why? Because that that relationship would be over as well. Right. If I'm complimenting other women, yeah, we're done. Right. No, I know. That's an example though. Like how one could feel that way yeah. caused by somebody else's actions. So she's allowing herself to be broke down to feel less about herself because her man can't control his himself. She is allowing it, yeah. Yeah. I would not tolerate that. Our society is so fucked up. It really is. You you made a comment today uh, on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'm going to do this, but I, I may cut it. I don't know if I want to do this. Um, fuck me, dude. So I opened my personal Instagram back, mm-hmm. right? I shut it down really early on uh, because it's just one more fucking thing. And I I spoke on another episode where like, I want to have normal life again. I want to be able to take pictures of my shoes and pictures of new bottles and it not be a person. Right. And not, and not be a podcast thing. Because like, if I get a cool bottle of whiskey and post it to the, to be better account on TikTok or Instagram, I'm going to get a small percentage of people who are into that. Mm -hmm. But when I change my hashtags from our normal hashtags, it fucks with the algorithm and it changes the way our videos are viewed. Right. So I can't do that. So I've been for the last month debating on whether or not I want to turn my Instagram back on. And I did. Mm -hmm. Um, I posted a picture of us on my Instagram of me looking at you from the rage room last night. And you said something about how you, I make you feel like the only girl on earth. Yeah. I said, I love that you are so enamored with me. You make me feel like the only woman on earth. Woman. Correct. And I said to you in the comment, I replied that you are because all the other women on the earth are NPCs to me. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not going to invest any of my effort or time into another relationship with anyone relationship, right? Like even if another woman came into our lives that was married to one of our friends and I'm friends with him, I'm not going to invest energy into making small talk with her unless there is a business reason, a financial reason or a emergency medical reason. I'm not engaging with her. I don't care about women in that aspect. I don't care about men. I really, you know, there's a a term for people who don't like people. What's that? A misanthrope. A misanthrope. A misanthrope is somebody who hates people. Yes. I am a misanthrope. Uh, Yeah, that feels like home. That's cozy. I, because as a whole, I think that people are fucking scum. I agree. And I think that with the loss of honor, integrity, loyalty, and Modesty, like respect and chivalry. the values, right? To the traditional values. Yeah. As that's gotten further and further away from a norm, I have become less and less disinterested in human species as a whole. Yeah. So I, I'm a misanthrope. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't want to be around people. You have to earn my respect for me to want to be around you. And that shit takes time. Yeah. I've known Jordan for 13 years. We, we developed a friendship last year. Mm-hmm. I have a friendship with Sean. I've been friends with him for 23 years. And, and like, we've actually had conversations about this. Like, bro, out of everybody that's come and gone in our lives, why are we still friends? <laughs> that's a good question. And it's because we have the same values. Right. We hold true to the same ideals and we're honest with each other. Mm-hmm. To have somebody that I can go, hey, this is happening. And him look me in the face and be like, you're really fucking up right now. And me not get mad about it, it says a lot. It does. Because I know he's got my best interest. He's not out to, to one up me or to try to benefit from me or mm-hmm. or anything. And I'm watching him right now come into his own as a business owner and yeah. like starting to do that life shit. And I'm fucking rooting for him, dude. Like, I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know why we got on that topic, but oh, because of the ropes. NPCs thing, yeah. the NPC things. That's how I view women. As long as I view you as a not real non-entity, insignificant, there's no reason for me to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So for you to be the most important woman or the only woman on the planet to me, that's the case. I think that when people 
choose not to view people in that light, it opens the door for them to take one step further than what they're doing. Right. And then one step further and one step further. And then all of a sudden they're looking back of how did I get here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Other men are just NPCs. But as I personally know with how I am, even though I want him to be happy because I love him and want the best for him, I can't fathom even thinking about him with another woman or with other women and it wouldn't spark my jealousy to be more than I want it to be. Did they say how long they were together? Um, no. Okay. So, perspective shift. Why would you pine after a man who's in love with another woman? Right. How embarrassing of you. I would be so embarrassed. And that's not me shitting on you. That's not me trying to make you feel bad. From my perspective and the way that I am with myself, it... I looking I am so shamed by my past behavior. I am so embarrassed by my past behavior. There is definitely a like I look back on my past self and I'm like, oh ew. I, I can't believe I was that person. That would be one of those moments. A hundred percent for me. I would look back on that ashamed and embarrassed. Because you are worth so much more. You you are now an NPC to this man. Yep. He is in love to another woman and just doesn't want to hurt your feelings. Right. Doesn't knowing, want to fall out from the breakup. Knowing that he p- could possibly view you as an NPC as just a term to do it because he is infatuated with somebody else. Well, he flat out said he just doesn't want to lose her as a friend. That's. I would move on. There is low self-esteem. This man, even if this man caused your low self-esteem issues. No. If this man caused your low self-esteem issues. Why do you want to be with him so bad? My husband makes me feel like the only woman on the planet. Only woman on the planet. My husband hypes me up so much. There are days where I feel like I am just the most disgusting, ugliest creature to grace this planet. And he'll smack my ass. I'm like, oh, but he likes this. He will nibble on my neck and kiss me and rest his head on my head as I'm cooking. Like, I feel like the most... You know that moment in Wicked when Elphaba's in the air and the light's on her and it's just super dramatic and there's things bellowing behind her? That's how I feel just... She's defying gravity? Yes. (laughs) Love that song. Oh my gosh. Our daughter loves it too. (laughs) Yep. It's... They're making a movie about that. I know. And I'm kind of upset about it because... No, wait. If it's it's what I'm thinking of and if it's Ariana Grande playing in... The Wicked, I'm, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. You really hate her, huh? It's not that I hate her. I think that she is a girl who is very damaged. She has been in the limelight for a very, very long time. And I don't think she understands what it truly means to be loved by somebody. Yeah. And, or I'm wrong and she's absolutely full of herself and knows that she can take anybody's man and she gets a kick out of it. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing for some people. It is a thing for some people. Either way, I just I can't agree with a lot of the the things that she does. And when I see her, there's an adverse reaction in me. It makes me less interested in what's going on. You know, when women pine after men or when men pine after women and chase them and and get friend zoned and continue to try. We call mm-hmm. them simps. We call them tricks. We call them a whole lot of fucking names, right? Right. Because everybody looks at that as pathetic. Right. Like, she obviously doesn't want you, bro. Stop. Mm -hmm. It's fucking creepy. It's weird. It's wrong. She's using you. Whatever. Right. It's happening in this situation, and I cannot think of a single word for what she's doing by wanting him to not be with another woman and treating him and and continue Mm -hmm. to try to make that work, even though he's told her that he just doesn't, he only wants to be her friend. Right. He doesn't want to lose her as a friend. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is something we hear a lot of women say all the time. Right. But what's going to happen? Right. Women say that to men all the time. Right. Because they get friend zoned. Right. But why would you want to be in a position where. If you're in the friend zone. Right. Or if you're in love and you see that other person has moved on and is happy with somebody else, they clearly don't love you. Mm -hmm. Just turn them off. Get them the fuck out of your life and move on out of sight, out of mind. Work on your healing process. Figure out how you could have been a better person for them. Mm -hmm. Work through the healing of your lost child. Right. Right. And then find somebody that's got a little bit more emotional maturity in them Mm -hmm. and not deal with this shit. Right. We get so many fucking emails from people who have that fallout after a loss of a child because they don't know how to talk about what's going on. Losing a pregnancy 
in my opinion, is one of the most traumatic things to go through. Oh, I believe it. For a woman. Yes. For a man, it's not. Right. For me personally, one of the most traumatic things I have ever gone through. It is very hard to experience trauma, process trauma, and communicate about trauma all at the same time. It's even harder when you don't know how. Right. When I am in moments of fight or flight and I am panicking, I am throwing rocks at a wall to see what happens. I'm stupid. Like caveman trying to figure out life. Grunting. Right. I have to go through what I'm going through. Process what I went through after it's over. And then once that processing is already in motion and I have less of an abstract picture and more of a blurry photo, then I can bring it to you and start talking about things because now I have an outline and then you can help me focus it. And then we can start to get a clearer picture because you're going to start giving me perspectives that I haven't thought about in my processing. They're on our street. Before we get back into that, I just want to say that I've stated over and over again that the issue is that they don't know how to talk through their problems. And just now when we were talking, I said that they don't know how to, we are not taught how to properly articulate how we're feeling in the moment. No. Especially if you grew up in the 80s and 90s with parents that were not fucking, oh, tell me how you feel, right? right? So we're taught to bottle things up. Men and women both. Women have a better understanding of their feelings because they talk to other women and they're able to process their feelings like that. We don't do that shit. Yeah. We have a beer, talk a little bit of shit, get drunk, fight, and go home. Like It's a very different thing for a man. However, I still believe that most young people have never been taught how to work through things of this caliber because you can't have conversations like this. Right. You try to talk about it and women are like, oh, I know exactly what you're going through, honey. You know the fuck you don't shut up, Linda. You don't fucking know anything because I'm processing this through my lenses. Right. You went through something similar. I understand that. But your experience and my experience is not the fucking same. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me you fucking understand. Tell me what you went through and tell me how you felt so that maybe I can try to put words to what I'm feeling so that I can fucking talk to my husband. Yeah. I don't I don't understand why we are not at a point in society yet where we have people who can genuinely come together in a fucking tribe or a community to to elevate other people. We have a men's group in our discord, mm-hmm. public and private. The private men's group has between seven and 10 people every single month. When one of those men come in that group and go, guys, I'm having a hard time. Every fucking man in that group goes, OK, bro, what's up? Like, we're here for you. Let's let's problem solve. What are you going through right now? And we try to give intelligent, emotional advice. So if you're going through something, we're not trying to relate to you. We're trying to go, okay, well, what is the logical answer? How do we problem solve this? How do you articulate to your woman what you're going through? How do we, how do we work together? Because it, it, we're a tribe. We're, you know, we're, when you hunt, it's a hunting party. Mm-hmm. When, when you have elders, they work together to solve problems. It's no fucking difference. We are always better in a community of understanding like-minded people than we are without that. Yep. So... We are failing our friends and our children by not having these hard conversations with them. You want to have the conversation of the birds and the bees? Then you need to have the conversations of hormones, actual hormones. Right. Postpartum depression. What happens if there's a miscarriage? What's going to happen as she's pregnant? Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of things. Milk production. There's conversations that need to be had other than how you get pregnant. We all know how you get fucking pregnant. Right. Just thought of a clugged milk duct. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that needs to be a discussion. Hurts. Oh my gosh. I, I thought I had to go to the ER. It took hours of massaging. Did you do it in the shower? Um, or in a hot tub? I did it in a bowl of hot water. Yeah. Hot shower or an actual hot tub? I did there were a couple of times. So it it was clogged for days. And I was trying the shower. I was trying to do it. Were you in a bowl doing it by yourself? Water. Yes. See? You know how fucking easy that would have been for for me? Yeah. If we were to sit down in a hot tub and for me to do that, it would have been right. a lot fucking easier on you because it's hard to hurt yourself. It is hard to hurt yourself. Um, Ooh, I'm fucking annoyed. I can tell. Ooh, Why? where did that come from? <laughs> where did that come from? That th- this is this is bothering me. Okay. And it's because of the ignorance of all of it. Right. I want to have maybe a playlist of us where we sit down and we talk about postpartum depression. I want to talk about postpartum depression in one episode. I want to talk about breastfeeding in another episode. Okay. I want to talk about um, spousal support in another one that's not based on postpartum depression. 
all of it. I yeah. want to talk about the hormones that change during pregnancy. Okay, we need to do. We need to research that. We absolutely should do that. And maybe even I, I don't know. Maybe even do it and not put it on Patreon and just put it straight straight to YouTube. I think straight to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. This email's annoying me. I didn't realize I was aggravated until I started talking just now. I could see it in your body language. That's I, why I kept asking if you're all right. Um, the miscarriage thing is hard for a lot of people. It is. And hearing people fail their relationship because they can't figure out what's going on between the two of them, a lot mm. of it comes down to a man not understanding what a woman's going through and a woman not being able to explain it. So it's a process of grief. It It is. And it is definitely more intense, in my opinion, for the woman than it is for the man. Absolutely. Could you say that there is either a lack of empathy or a lack of grace or maybe even a lack of patience it's there? It's ignorance. Okay. Because we don't experience it the same way. We don't experience birth the way you do. Right. My daughter, my biological wasn't real until I held her. Yeah. I felt the kicking. Yeah. I saw then, her get super fucking big. Like An idea in your brain. Right. There's going to be a baby here one day. You guys experience that way early on. Six weeks, you start noticing things going on in your body. Yep. It started with, it felt like, it literally felt like just little flutters. Right. But you're aware of that life form. Yeah. So you have a very different connection to that child than we do. Mm -hmm. So when you are going on a three-week depression and we're like, come on, what the fuck? Get over this by now. Right. Because we've heard men say that to their women in emails. Mm -hmm. You don't understand what they're going through. They're grieving the loss. It's no different than if you would have actually lost a fucking child. Right. They their brain registers that as a child. You may not have. It's a very different scenario. And if you have that conversation and a man can understand that when you're depressed and you say, look, I'm just not I'm not OK today. Well, why are you not OK? Is it the baby? Yes. OK, well, let's talk about that. Right. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's make it real so that you're not just going through. I'm fucking crazy and depressed. Mm -hmm. And and he's not going through. Come on, bitch, get over this. Like this is this is this should be a normal thing. This should be a normal conversation. Why the fuck is this not normalized? Because it's like you said, it's not it's taught ignorance. anymore. It is. And it's not a failure on the education system. This is not a school problem. This is generations failing generations. Yep. I was going to say it's parental. Yes. Ooh, I just almost said, um, and I caught it. Good catch. Thank you. This used to be a thing. It was because there used to be midwives and grandmothers and aunts right. that were involved in all of that. Well, the only communication that there was for a very long time was verbal communication. If you want to talk to somebody, you're going to walk 10 miles to go talk to your mom. Mm -hmm. Or write a really long fucking letter right. and wait for it to get back. Or smoke signals. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, we need help. <laughs> right. There was... So communi for a very long time, once we developed language, language was all we had until we had written language and then all of the new develops and we had telephone calls and wires and whatnot. The art of communication was the way you talk to humans. Yeah, and it all, it all started dying with the telephone. It did. It did. You can definitely see, even when television was invented, there was a decline in things. Yeah. Because there's a new form of entertainment now. We can watch drama on TV and we don't have to go outside and talk to people. I can just get my fill here of whatever, whatever. I think the rise of technology, period, has changed the way that we've talked to each other. I, I listened. It was like a black, a short, very short black and white film clip from when they first started doing movies. And it was a dialogue between a husband and a wife and the husband was like, you know, I'm I'm very unhappy with our marriage right now. And her response of, well, why is that? That was it. And they just had a conversation. And at the end of it, it came to, okay, X, Y, and Z needs to change. I have communicated to you some things that have been frustrating me. How do you feel now about our marriage? Right. And that's the conversation. There was no screaming and yelling on either parts. There was no throwing dishes. They were eating in the middle of having this possibly life altering conversation about their marriage because it's just a conversation. Right. There's actually studies done that has shown the, the de-evolution of communication starting at the telephone mm -hmm. because it used to be everybody would sit down to dinner. They would stay close together with their family. They would never move more than 30 or 40 miles away from home mm -hmm. because that communal family mattered. It's how you with survived. Survival. Right. And then the telephone started, people were able to stay in contact every day of the week instead of just mm -hmm. on Sunday dinners and people stopped having big dinners over. And then with the advent of cell phones, 
Um, people had more communication par- possibilities and we went from phone calls to text messages. And it's so, all long distance. Right. So now the conversation went from actual verbal communication to very quick interactions on text message where you may not even get a reply. Yeah. And now with the advent of messenger services over everything, people are more disconnected from that community than they've mm-hmm. ever been in their life. Yeah. Now we're communicating with emojis. Right. Right. Yeah. Evolution is de-evolving. That's why our podcast is successful. Mm-hmm. Because we figured out how to have a conversation where most people scream at each other. Right. Or or fail to even say what's on their mind because people are you know how much how much fucking hate I get because of how direct I am? Do you yeah. are do you ever question where you stand with me? No. Because I'm direct. Right. I'm not giving you bullshit answers. I'm not beating around the bush. I'm not saying, well, maybe this could change. I'm telling you what I fucking need. Well, let me ask you, do you ever question where you stand with me? No, because you do the same thing to me. You've right. gotten so good about just giving me the details of what I need to know that our communication's not guessing. Yeah. Well, she said maybe I should do this, or she said that she she doesn't really know what's going on, but she thinks it's that's not the case. So I don't understand. If we are both direct, how come you get hate for it and I don't? Because I, I do it. Because you're a man? Because of the way I do it. I do, I'm brash. I'm not going to sugarcoat things to make anyone fucking feel better. If you're that soft that me being honest with you hurts your feelings, get fucked. I don't care. But I, I agree with all of that. Right. Do I not conduct myself You that don't same way? sound like an asshole when you talk. Because you have a softer tone okay. and a more elegant face. Like you are a more elegant being. And I, I am a, a brash blue collar man. People okay. don't do well with that. This is all there is to it. And I get a shit ton of hate for it. And people are, there are people out there who are like, I love that you're direct. Yeah, that blows my mind. You would think that you would want to be with somebody where you don't have to question what is happening with them. Right. Even if the the delivery is a little sandpapery. I would rather deal with sandpaper than deal with sugar-coated nonsense. I would rather deal with sandpaper than knives in my back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can put that sandpaper directly on my palm. At least I can see you doing it. Yeah. You know what sandpaper is used for? refining wood no no i mean it, it, <laughs> not, no that's actually not true but sandpaper can be used for all kinds of things it's not just wood it could be right. plastics it, metals isn't it like an abrasive surface to help smooth something out to smooth things out yeah. it's used to perfect okay that's what sandpaper is used for mm. you can use a planer right you can take a a plank and put it in a fucking machine that that takes the entire top of the wood off and makes it smooth right it's still not perfect it still has like multiple layers of sanding that needs to get done mm-hmm. To get to that smooth, perfected, now we're going to put a fucking top across it and a varnish and like make it we're stained. Put some finisher and, on it. Right. But sandpaper is used to perfect things. If you make something out of, of 3D printing, you still have to sand it to make it smooth and make it precise and perfect. So to have somebody refer to me as sandpaper to, to be the final touches before you finish mm-hmm. a project, I'll be that. I will be that thing that is used for perfection. Call me sandpaper. I'm about that. I'm glad that I said that. Yep. You're my sandpaper. I'll be that. Well, no, I'm just not, it's less special now because you said that anybody could call you that. So. <laughs> so now that I'm your sandpaper, though, it's still special because it's my sandpaper. Yeah. People are like, somebody said to me the other day on TikTok that they love how uh, in love we are and how confident we are without being possessive. And I'm like, you obviously don't watch <laughs> our content. We are possessive as fuck over each other. <laughs> Crazy laugh. Insert psycho laughter. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) We have food getting cold up there. Are we almost done? Yes. I just want to say, I don't think you guys understand how absolutely unhinged I am in my brain and how well I keep these floodgates closed. Yeah. Yeah. He said he wants to try and work it out, but if we can't find that spark again, then he wants to try and still be best friends. Absolutely impossible. Yeah, it is. If you were still best friends with any of your exes and I'm your wife, that's a problem for me. Your best friend is somebody you want to experience life with. So Mm -hmm. if you are taking time away from me to go experience life with another woman, why don't you just be with that other woman? Yep. I'm good on that. I am not going to be the best friend of a of a man in a relationship. That's not what that is. That's not what he wants. He just he wants to move on. Right. That's exactly what he wants. Right. But he's, but he's um, trying to do it in a way that's not going to hurt her feelings. 
that's trying to do he's trying to do as much damage control as possible he's also telling her that he needs that spark and that lust back that you right. had in the roommate phase or in the the honeymoon phase that mm-hmm. you lost you lost it yeah you can work to get that back because it's a choice but he's already moved on and got it with somebody new and doesn't have to do the work now because right. new person doesn't have all the trauma and baggage that you have. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have all the history that you have. It's right. a new slate. He's moved on. Right. I said that more because you are madly in love with this man. And he is not. And he is not. And you're just going to... I Public view of that, I don't want to be... Oh, poor girl. She's still in love with him, but they're just she's just going to be his best friend. They still spend all of this time together. Yeah. Mm-mm. I believe you can be friends with your exes. I do believe that. Yeah. But not best friends. No. There needs to be some sort of disconnect there. There has to be a boundary. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what to do at this point. All of my friends tell me to leave him, but I physically can't. You know, you physically can. You're you choosing just not won't. to. Right. Yeah. It is a choice. For you to say I physically can't, you would have to be chained to something that you cannot undo yourself. When I, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I'm going to take this to an extreme just to prove my point. There was a man who kept women chained in his basement for years. And there was one woman who gained his trust enough to be able to go upstairs and clean his house for him. She was feigning the whole I'm in love with you. I want to take care of you and all of that. And one day he left and I can't remember if she wasn't properly chained up in the basement or if they had built that over time and he just trusted her to be at home, but she escaped and she brought attention to all of it. All of the other women were taken out of that basement. That's you can't physically leave. Right. If you are not in that, you can. There'd be a whole lot of people that are going to argue with you. Well, what if you don't have money? You leave. How much do you want to struggle? Well, right. you're going to struggle either way. Right. Yeah, choose your hard. How much do you want to struggle? Because if I'm in a relationship, say I am with, so I, the, I'm not Peaches, right? My name is Jessica and I am 34 years old. I've been living with a man who's an alcoholic and he's physically abusive with me. And I've been a stay at home for three years, right? Stay at home wife. I would rather live on the street, pick up jobs where I can, shower at a gym, and build my life than live in that situation. Right. Because you're picking one heart over another. Right. Yeah, I, I don't I don't subscribe to the mindset that you can't do something. Right. I've started over a few times in life. Mm-hmm. So you can always do something. You might have to plan it. Yeah. It might take a couple of years to come into fruition. Well, that's what it took for that woman to get out of that basement. Right. So there can definitely be steps taken to make it happen though. Yep. If there is any way you guys can help, I would very much appreciate it. I'm sorry if this isn't what you guys do, and I'm just emailing to into the void. I love that she's already been told what she needs to do in this whole situation by everyone in her life, and she wrote into us like we're going to give her a different piece of advice. Right. Your situation is fucked up, girl. Like, yeah, you, let's go. Yeah. And then there's an update. Yes, the update is we broke up, but he is still keeping me around as his best friend. It's kind of a weird situation. He kept telling me that he messed up and goes back and forth with wanting to get back together. I tried to do no contact with no luck. And then he did a complete 180 and said he doesn't love me like that anymore. And I just have to get over it and stay his best friend because he can't imagine his life without me. You know, you you need to cut ties. I would go no contact on everything. I would move on with my life. I would not put an ounce of my thought power into thinking about this person for now. I would focus on me, what I want my life to look like, start building up my own hobby, start building up my own interests. I would rediscover who Peaches is. And then from there, once I am healed enough to look back on that period without thinking I physically can't leave this person, because that's such a broken mindset. There, there is, you, your brain needs some, try some lion's mane. <laughs> there's a cognitive disconnect. There is a, there's a desperateness about it. There is a longing for exception. Acceptance. Acceptance, yes. You, a, a lot of therapy. I'd recommend a lot of therapy, a lot of self-discovery, a lot of, emotional maturity 
work on your self-esteem and your self-confidence. Don't base your will, your worth on what the person you're with opinion is of you. Because I have worth outside of my husband's opinion of me. His opinion means a lot. If I am slacking in my wifely duties or I'm not doing what I need to do as a woman, I want him to tell me and I will put weight on that opinion. I am still my own human being though. I still have worth outside of being your wife that I bring to the world. For example, this podcast. You need to pack it up. Wonder what, I wonder what his new woman who knew about you mm-hmm. is feeling knowing that he's still talking to you or does she even know? Oh, that's a good question. Right? Yeah. Very, very good question. Uh, with that being said, guys, I hope you like the new format of the podcast. We removed a whole lot of banter and gave you two full length emails at almost two hours. And, um, this is how we're going to do things moving forward. So again, if you want to hear the life banter that we have, and you want to hear about our toys and the things that we're doing, check out to be better life on Mm -hmm. YouTube and TikTok. Correct. And if you want to follow us both on Instagram individually, it's savage disposition and Mrs. Burkett photography. Yep. I'm thinking about changing it. Yeah. Yeah, like Mama Peaches or something, just to make it easier for people to search. I think somebody's already using that. Are they? I think so. Didn't we talk about that for your Mama Peaches kitchen or something for the cooking content? I think that's already being used. Okay. But if it gets changed, I'm sure that people can find you if they search Miss Burkett Photography. Just hashtag a couple of your photos with that so that if people search it, it'll pop up. I'm going to change it to something with peaches in it. Yeah. Yeah, just so it's easier for people to find. Okay. But for now, it's Mrs. Burkett Photography. All right. With that being said, guys, remember you're the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.